I received the replacement battery for my HTX202 from Radio Shack, right here. I'm going to go ahead and unbox it, and then we'll be taking a look at the radio. Okay, this is how it comes. Let's see. I can get it out of there. There it is. The battery looks like pretty good quality. Um, the color and finish are, I guess, similar to ICOM radios that this battery is also used for. The HTX202 that I bought on eBay comes with it. Came with an included battery, and they said it needed a in replacement insert, which. You know, may or may not have been cheaper than the twenty-five dollars I paid. I paid brand new for this entire assembly on Amazon. Looks good though. Uh, I'm gonna try plugging it in. I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna need to get a twelve-volt tip positive, one hundred milliamp charger uh, to charge this DC thirteen point eight volts and wall charger. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. I guess that's in order to bypass the battery entirely with 13.8 volts. The radio actually, I thought, oh, I guess the radio does not have a separate separate uh, plug for 13.8 volts. There it is on the radio, the Expert Power Amazon $25 replacement battery pack for the HTX202 and similar radios. Um, color and fit and finish is a bit different, less, less noticeably different than is probably showing up here in the video. Looks good though, fits well, fits snug, secure, and perfectly. I have not turned this radio on since I received it from eBay. Excellent. It's moving. It's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've got company. So, so far, I'm quite happy with this. Um, it scans very quickly, as you can see. Um, it only has 16 total memories. Uh, one calling frequency, which, of course, you set for 146520 and then 12 standard frequencies, and then three priority frequencies. I've, I've programmed most of the standard frequencies. And uh, of course it's only two meters, so having only 12 standard frequencies actually isn't that big a deal, because that's about all the repeaters I have local to me within the range of a handheld, probably actually even further than that. Uh, was able to raise a repeater uh, just fine, so it's transmitting well. Uh, solid. I really like the way it feels in the hand. It feels like a real, real radio. Um, definitely built well. Not really a whole lot to say. It's quite easy to program. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, much easier than the Chinese radios like the, like the Baofengs. Um, just to give you a little comparison though, with the scan rate, you saw this, and then, uh, I have my UV82 here, which is actually a pretty decent radio, but you could see how slowly it scans in comparison. It might be picking up the... Of course it picks up the carrier as soon as I do that, but as you can see, it's nowhere near as fast. The Baofeng has quite a few more channels. Uh, also, this is a dual band for 40 megahertz radio as well. Uh, it does have the nice feature of allowing you to enter the names of the repeaters, which the, the Radio Shack model doesn't allow you to do. Obviously, it's quite a bit larger. But I look forward to sp spending some time with this and uh, getting to know it a little better and its quirks. But so far, the audio quality has been outstanding. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it in the... Uh, recorded QSO video. I've listened to a little bit more than that and I can't fault the audio at all. It's clear and and um, nice fidelity. This radio I bought 
get a little glare from my flash there, but as you can see, this radio has the backup battery socketed for easy replacement. And that's one of the drawbacks of these older HTX 202s and I guess the 404s as well, as is these batteries die, they're certainly they're all dead by now, and they are not easy to replace. They aren't, they aren't socketed like this. So this radio has had a mod done and the battery replaced just last month prior to my purchase. So that's one thing you're gonna have to look out for if you are interested in one of these HTX 202s. Confirm that the battery has recently been replaced or you're gonna to have to replace it and apparently it's not easy to do. I got real lucky with this one. Okay, YouTube, well, I'll say 7-3. Thanks for watching. A5R. And this is K5 KTF. Was this radio fully programmed in now? Kind of in and out of the repeater there for a while. Were, were you simplex or something? Uh, this, uh, her, her FT90 that I got for her at Summerfest didn't have the 6-4 programmed in, so I was, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't have the tone set, I didn't have the shift set. I was like, oh, man, come on. So I finally, I think, got it all done. Oh, and it's so easy to do. I guess you were doing it while you were driving, right? No, no, no. We're sitting here uh, at the adjuster. We're, we, we got here early.